Hi, my name is Valen Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with a renowned lyricist, producer, songwriter. He does tracking, mixing, monitor engineering. He's an actor. He's a Renaissance man. His name, Knowledge Ra. For more on Knowledge Ra, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, here is a sneak peek at his incredible talent. Like, like when folk ask me what I do, I'd be like. How are you? How you doing, brother? What's going on, Will? Uh, I'm doing so much better now that I'm speaking with you, and I'm so excited that the audience not only got a little sneak peek of who you are, but I want to just let the audience and tell them who you are. You are an amazing lyricist, producer, songwriter. You do tracking. You do mixing. You're a monitor engineer. You're an actor. You're a 21st century, truly a 21st century Renaissance man, and dare I also say, you have apparel, okay? I do. Go to the <laughs> website. You have apparel, future fashion icon. You're fantastic. Mm -hmm. I want to know before anything. Okay. When did you realize that you had this spark of creativity that you knew that one day you just had to get out? Ah, oh, man. Um, so I started writing, believe it or not, when I was about six, writing poems. And I started uh, playing drums when I was about nine. And I've been a part of music since you know very young young age. And 2009, I think was a turning point for me uh, as far as doing music professionally. I actually suffered a an, an aortic aneurysm, and I had to have open heart surgery. And uh, it was at that point I was in my bed, my hospital bed. My mom was there every day, and I told my mom, uh, I was like, "Mom, I want to I want to do music." professionally you know I want to get back into music and she told me you can do it baby and 2010 I started school uh for my music business degree I graduated and then I packed up everything I own that I could carry with me to Florida and I went to Full Sail University graduated there top of my class with honors uh packed up everything again came out to New York with my car my clothes man and made the dream happen bro <laughs> that's uh what a story. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not only you had to obviously go through something to really, really then realize obviously how fleeting life is, but the fact that you literally risked it all. And look at you now, my friend, you are um, doing, you have your tentacle in every single aspect of this industry, but you do it with excellence. And I mean, your mom must be so proud. Oh, she's man. She is. Uh, every time I, I post something like uh, I'm, I'm working on raw apparel now, uh, it's still in the works, you know, and I'm just uh, one of those, you know, I have this artist creator complex, you know, wanted to be as right as it can be when I started, you know, so uh, I, I'm starting a shoe line as well. And I sent her a prototype and she just wildfired it to her work to everyone she knew. And she's course. so supportive. My yeah, mom's so I love it. And I could see your mom like doing like the her version of, you know, she'll like design like for women her age, that shoe. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. It's the, now the, it's the artist mind to me. I could just see like your mom is like your like sidekick, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but what a beautiful story and what a beautiful story that you continue to have. I'm curious to know during this time, Knowledge Ra, that um, the art that you've been able to create. Mm -hmm. So my, uh, I feel like my inspiration has been, my favorite producer is Jay Dillon. And um, when I heard, when I first heard of Jay Dillon, it was about 2006, and I bought The Shining um, when CDs were a thing. And uh, I was like, oh man, I had that CD was on repeat for like weeks. And I gotta meet, I wanna meet him before, you know, before, before I die, even before I die. 
you know, that was like one of those things for me. And unfortunately, he ended up passing from lupus before I got that chance, but uh, got allowed to make the opportunity where I could meet his family. You know, I met his brother, met his mom, my dukes, and uh, that's that was a blessing for me. So, and everything that I, I do as far as uh, as far as the music, I do try to keep it genuine. I do try to keep it, you know, as 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 true to hip hop as I know it to be, you know? I feel like um, lyricists matter. Lyricism matters, you know, writing matters, you know, and, and the things that are elements of hip hop really should continue to be included in what hip hop is today, you know? And I feel like sometimes it's, it's not, but that's my own personal opinion and I own it. But um, yeah, man. Uh, I try to be as true as I can be, and I think I do a pretty good job. <laughs> well, I think you do a great job as well. And I'm curious about that lyricism you were talking about. Mm. Just keep thinking about that kid who loved writing poetry. Yeah, I uh, I think my first, so my father passed when I was two. And um, so I wrote my first poem was about my father, you know, and what I knew of him, you know, and I let my grandmother, my grandfather read his parents and like they loved it, you know. It was, you know, a simple six-year-old poem, you know, but it was, you know, good to them to where they told like other parts of my family. And so, okay, well, you know, at six, this is not bad, you know. And uh, I started doing spoken word about uh, 2004, for real, because I, I, I've always been a writer. And uh, I started performing spoken word when I was in Memphis. I think I was in Memphis at that time. And made traction in that. And when I went to, uh, I moved down to Little Rock, Arkansas, that's where my mom was living. Uh, I linked up with a bunch of good brothers that are, we are still family to this day. Like blood couldn't make us any closer. And um, they helped grow me or help me see the potential that I didn't see in myself as a lyricist and you know ultimately a producer you know, and uh, I give a lot of respect and honor to them you know because uh, it's rare that you meet genuine people in a life you know and I have a plethora of people in my corner that are very real and very genuine people you know and I always I always hold love for them I always hold respect for them well that's amazing and you're also honoring them and everyone that you've come across who have given you and helped you get those tools in your tool belt by continuing to do and spreading your light the way that you're doing it. In addition to, you know, I love that you say lyricism because you have a beautiful lyricism throughout all of your work though, because you're a creator at the end of the day as well. Um, you know, you create from the ground up every with every aspect of, you know, your creative being is a part of your brand. And I'm curious, do you have any inspirations within the business and music world that you look up to in terms of that whole kind of idea of being in control of the whole 360, the whole brand? Honestly, I, I'll tell you this. I never wanted to be the person that stayed in, in one lane. If I could, you know, switch lanes and still maintain my speed, so to speak, then I'll try. My, my, I think my inspiration is, is generally just trying. Um, I, I don't really, I try to stay away from, oh, so-and-so did this, let me do that too. Uh, I try to just do my own thing. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'll try something else. I love you know, that. I, well, I think, sorry to interrupt, but that's, that makes, you're a first-rate version of yourself, not a second-rate version of <laughs> someone else. When I think of Knowledge Raw, first-rate version, baby. Sorry, that's my soap <laughs> box. I'm off. Appreciate it, Will. You know, and and I, I try to to steer away from, you know, someone else did this thing. Let me try to do that too. You know, um, obviously multiple artists and creators have apparel lines. You know, um, but I, I think that I just want to create something that is comfortable, that people will spend and want to purchase that will last them for longevity. You know, it's it's. I've been in situations where I would go to a concert and I buy a t-shirt and like the logo was like fading after like a month or so, you know, like quality material and quality products. You know, that's why I really, and I care, I care about what people are spending their money on. So I wanted you to have the best 
the best quality material product that I can offer you, you know, and if there's something that, you know, I, I'm open to my clientele, I'm open to my customer base. If you have an idea or a suggestion, please, I'm open to that. You know, um, I'm not one of those people who are like, I made this, this raw apparel and this is what it's going to be. Like, I would love input from, you know, the community base that supports me in that fact. You know, same thing with producing music. You can work with a client. I'm not going to give them a beat or a track that is not 100% what they want. If there's something they like changed or they want added or anything like that, just talk to me. You know, and that's pretty much how I, honestly, I stay in business, man, because I'm very personable and very approachable. And I'm very open to what your creativity is as my client. You know what I mean? What I love so much about your knowledge, Ra, is also like how I kind of view my directing. Best idea mm -hmm. wins. But also, let's call a spade a spade. As a young gentleman of the planet, you have gone through a lot. But you it's... have used it, being in that darkness at one point, turned it into a light. Not only for yourself, but for everyone who is around you whether they be friends, family, clients, and you are absolutely incredible. And I'm wondering, would you play us out with some of your original tunes? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Naladra, you can read more about him right below this video. And Naladra, you're you're an inspiration. Oh, man, bless, bless. I'm uh, I'm here, man. And uh, if I can help anyone, honestly, if you if you're good people, I, I, obviously there's a lot of people that will try to use you and abuse you. You know, if you're good people, you got a good heart, man. I I don't mind trying to help you in any way that I can. You know, and it's also about the vibration. You know what I mean? You can tell with these, you can tell, especially in our business, right? It's mm -hmm. like, we don't have time for that, you know? No, and, I, right. and I sense that with you, you know, and uh, yeah. it's all over, but it's all over your personhood. It's all over your brand. You go on social media. You know, I remember opening up your social media and I just put a smile on my face. There's just a, <laughs> there's a, there's a good vibe about you. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I attribute that to, my upbringing, my grandfather, my grandparents were very grounded people, very solid people. And they really taught me the importance of how to treat others and as well as my mother, you know, uh, how to treat women, you know, how to treat them with respect, you know, things like that. And um, so I really owe the man that I am to my upbringing, to my mother, you know, to my grandparents, my grandfather in particular, because he taught me a lot of life lessons at a very young age. And I feel like that kind of kept me ahead of the race and growing up, you know, because I remember being 12 and looking at other 12 year old kids and they're like, I'm thinking how the childish, I'm 12 as well, you know, but the impartation of my grandfather's life lessons at like the youngest of ages and what I can understand, you know, really plays, a, I think a huge, huge deal, a uh, huge part, uh, excuse me, and how I look at life and how I look at people and how I deal and treat 
in my interactions with, you know, with honesty, with respect, you know, and unfortunately, that's not common you know, nowadays. I know, <laughs> but you know what you're doing? You're also putting that forward through your art and it's going to, you know, outlive all of us. It's, it's your legacy about this, about the beauty of excellence, the beauty of kindness, and the beauty of choosing good. And um, you make, you had to make a choice in that hospital bed to keep going. And not only did you do that, you're thriving. And uh, again, I, I have so many more questions, but maybe we'll do a part two sometime. But Nala, John, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you opening the platform up for me, Will. Thank you.